Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And today I'm with Jerry Bailey. Jerry, good to see you. Same here, Lou. And uh, we're at the World of Wheels in Milwaukee. Come on out, see a great car show. Go to any of the World of Wheels car shows. You're going to see some fun cars. Well, this one, well, I like originals and bringing it back to original. And this one doesn't get much better than that. What do we have here today for him, Jerry? Well, we have a 67 Camaro. Uh, it's a Rally Sport Super Sport original car. Uh, black over red. Um, how many how many black ones did they make back then? They only made three percent of all three percent. Yep, were black in '67. And this one, well, how long did the restoration take? And I got to give a shout out to your wife Mitzi because you did all the work with her, other than the paint. Other than the paint, we did the whole car in eight months, start to finish, every nut, bolt, wire. We did a complete car in eight months. And you asked Miss Mitzi to give you a name for the car. What'd she call it? Yeah, I told her. I said, well, we have to come up with a name. Well, she, she suggested, let's give the name of uh, the car a name. And I said, well, come up with something. And she said, how about the Midnight Special? And I said, I like that. It's black. And she said, no, not because it's black. It's because you spent every midnight for eight months working on that car. <laughs> and uh, I said, OK, that works. I, yeah, I'll do it. Come right alongside me. Let's take a look at what we have here. So here well is the midnight special <laughs> this one's just so sweet first of all the fact that it's a 67 and jerry the the microphone's right there so we've got the 350 uh, obviously engine in it on the SS, the Super Sport, and it's yes. the RS. Yes, it's the, the Rally Sport and Super Sport model. Um, Which is the high end. It, it, it was. In 67 that was. And if it was a, a Rally Sport, Super Sport, the SS badging took precedence. So the SS was the performance aspect of the car and the Rally Sport was the appearance package. Uh, it really, you know, I know that you know, 67 and, and even with the Mustang, I mean, the design's just iconic, but really looks good with the hideaways. Yeah, I think so, too. I, I think mean, the, hide, the hideaway headlights give it just a, a special look. It doesn't get any better looking than that. Let me come on over here. Now, a lot of people don't realize the 350 Chevy engine made its debut in a 67 Camaro Super Sport. So that was the only car in 1967 that had a 350 Chevy engine in it. Really? Yes. And then uh, in 1968, a lot of the GM products had 350s in them, but that car made that engine made its debut in the Camaro Super Sport in '67. Did not know that. Thanks for that piece of information. So, obviously, we have the uh, the SS badging here. Yes. What do they call this stripe? Is there a name for That's it? That's a bumblebee stripe. Bumblebee stripe. Yeah, and that okay. was exclusive in '67 to the Super Sport package. To the Super Sport. You can see how clean this paint is because, well, you can see me right there. I like the antenna on the back. Yeah, some of them that was just uh, an option for the amount of antenna. I want to just show that curve right there. I always thought having the spoiler on the back was the right move for this car as well because it gave it just the right design. So I wanted to share that that look with people. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think the spoiler has just a little bit of flair. It's about. just enough. Yes. The red line tires to go with the red interior. Yeah. And the Super Sports all came with red line tires on them from the factory. The Super Sports came with the red lines. They did, with the Firestone wide oval Super Sport red lines. Good luck finding another gas cap. Yeah, I know. Let's take a look in the trunk, shall we? Sure. <laughs> wow. What did the car look like when you were uh, first bought it? It was a nice, solid southern car. Um, just kind of tired. It needed refreshed, but overall it was a nice, straight, solid car. And refresh my memory, you had this one since 2008? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, and if you cool. notice, I have to point out the screwdriver. I see that, yeah. What that was for was to pop the center caps off of the wheels so yeah. that you can use the lug wrench to take the lug nuts off. So was that part of the car? Yes. And it's right here on your the screwdriver, right on the jacking instructions. Look at that. And you rarely see that. And as far as I know, no, you don't. 
that, that, may, that came with the car, so that may well be the original screwdriver. I'm not sure. Wow. Well, that's a cool little piece. All right, let's, uh, we'll close that. We'll close the trunk and let's take a look, may I? Absolutely. Thank you. While I have it in the air, I just want to show people this as well. Let me just take you here. Because this one's as clean on the top as it is on the bottom. You know, you usually get to see the underside, but this time, well, we did. Okay. Making sure the viewers get the full, the full ensemble. But well, look at this. Go ahead. I can put a mirror down on the front. All right, yeah, go ahead. Put one down there. That'd be great. Great idea. I will be doing your interior while you're doing that. But really... The red and black. The three pedals. Actually, you could say there's a fourth parking brake. What the driver would look out at. The SS with the 350 in there, that's nice. the inserts in the seats. Jerry, can we roll this down for just a second? Thanks. I just want to get that shot right. There. So the so the black inserts on the seats, that was a, a, yep. an upgrade? For the deluxe interior. The deluxe interior. Yeah, the, the plain basic interior didn't have the inserts. The door panels were just a little different. Yeah. And um, some of the moldings on the doors were different. The primarily, and the Deluxe has the rear armrest. The standard interior didn't. The rear armrest, yeah. What were some of the more difficult parts when you were restoring this car? Like, what do you say, this just took me a while to find, or this was a difficult piece? Probably the hardest part was the oil filler tube on the engine. Is that right? Let's yeah. Um, Let me show that photo right there. That's clean. Wow, okay. This car has, a, it's called a, a K23. So this filler tube here? Yes, because it has behind a PVC valve screws into the filler tube. And it has it be high enough to, for the PCV valve to screw in to clear the radiator hose. And it was a very difficult piece to find, so I found a NOS piece, but still with the original sticker on it. That took a little bit of time to find. What was the reaction when you found it? I, I couldn't believe I found it. I called the good gentleman and I said, would you happen to have one of these? And he said, let me check. And he came back and he said, I actually do. And I says, good, I want that filler tube. And I said, well, you got to tell me the price. And I said, but it really doesn't matter. I'm going to buy it anyway. So he said, okay. He said, I have it for you. And it was wasn't it, was cheap. Was arm and a leg? A little yeah, bit. A little bit, yeah. It, it, it was... <laughs> but it all worked. But, but it all worked. You know what? It's worth it, right? When you it, find that piece, it's absolutely. like whatever. Because now it just gives you that feeling of completion. <laughs> right, because the chances of finding that were really so slim. I thought if I ever do find that... Right, I've definitely got to pick it up. Yeah, right. The price wasn't an object. Well, this is so well done. It still has the decoded plug wires on it, the Delco Packard wires, uh, Delco Marine charger. It has the decoded wires on it. And plug the, all the radiator hoses. Are correct. It has the correct belts on it, GM belts. 
walk around the car, right? It still has the R59 Delco Energizer battery. That's awesome. All right, well, let's fire it, shall we? And uh, while I'm up here, we'll fire it, and then uh, we'll get the headlights. We'll actually shut the hood because I want to really get the design component there. Okay, so when you start it, then we'll start it. Is it vacuum or electric? They're electric. Okay, go ahead. You can open. Let's open them up. That's nice. Perfect. All right, I didn't want to miss that piece. Go ahead, let's fire it. You know, I did a pretty good job of making sure that mirror did not get moisture and splash oh, on that's it. That's <laughs> we did explain that. Well, first of all, Jerry, what a treat meeting, yeah? No, oh, uh, the pleasure uh, was mine. Sh shout out to uh, uh, Colonel Andy Starr, who said you got to meet Jerry and see his car. He was totally right. Andy, thank you very much for the opportunity for this. Yeah. It was great. And I'm looking forward to hearing how people react to the car. Thanks for being on my car story. Hey, I appreciate it. Lou, it was a pleasure. I thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to give a shout out to actually the gentleman who painted my car. Yeah, sure, go ahead. And uh, Larry Plisco from Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, he did an incredible job on the black paint. And the pinstriper is Casey Kennel from Somerset, Pennsylvania. He did a phenomenal job pinstriping it. Hey guys from out east, let's shut that door. I want to show the side of the car. I'll give. I'll give him. We've already talked about the paint. There's me in the paint. But let me take me kind of out of the paint and let's. See if the camera, and I'm sure it can, can get that just how pristine that paint it is. Let me even get the other side, I get the whole side. Can you shut the hood for a second, Jerry? Can you shut the hood for a second? Let me just get that. I want to get people that whole design. That's a great way to end with that right there. Subscribe, hit the bell, we'll see you soon.